um, here we are <laughs> looking up at cedar trees etc in this beautiful place um, on this beautiful island and um, we're going to be reading quiet poems and um, louder poems. Hi. My name is Kate Braid and I'm speaking to you from the Gulf Island which is traditionally known as Sedans, um, otherwise known as Pender Island. And I'm going to be um, reading this first poem from Turning Left to the Ladies. This is a book of construction poems. I was a construction worker, carpenter, contractor for 15 years. And um, so this one is called, it's a farewell poem. 13 songs to my hammer and one lament. I'll just skip around a bit. I never speak her name aloud for she is a dragon Tough number with a raspy roar of smoke-stained steel. Her name, distilled, is all the steely hard names the men have ever called me. Her name lifts me, says, we're still here, together. I am the only carpenter on this job who calls her hammer, she. This is the day for the pink plaid shirt, strawberry perfume, and swing my tool belt, hammer on my hip hard as I waltz to work. Hi, boys. It's me and my hammer. I dare you. What else is like a hammer? More right and faithful, more reliable. Her name is Red is rich is the smell of pitch. In broad daylight kisses the heads of nails, a wet smack to the two by fours, deep belly wrench suck sexual thrill of two by tens. The girl, men say, not noticing there are two of us. I dream a man curses me, watches me walk to a plank resting across sawhorses. I raise my hand and bang, two pieces fall to the ground. The man is speechless. My hammer does this for me. Though it's all memory now. Hammer, here's a sorrow song of goodbye, a sister song from my hard hammering heart, your name, my secret still. This is a poem from the book Elemental from the air section called Red Wing, I Say. And it has uh, a brief introduction, a few lines from Maureen Scott Harris, um, an Eastern poet who said, Sparrow, we say, redwing, magpie, crow, the field goes on. Redwing, blackbird, able feeder, what do you have to teach me? Forgive my demand, it is based on urgency. I do not say desperate, but you will understand. Redwing, Bearing your own epaulets, unspeakable courage to always fly forward. Are you not tempted sometimes to return to the egg? Redwing, why did the one who named you omit the gold, the sun that shines from you to light the way? Or is it your song that leads, gives me courage, tricks me some days into looking up just this. This poem is from the book Elemental and it's called Tree Song. And I'll just tell you about the form of this poem. It's called a glossa. Um, in a glossa, you take four lines from another poet. Then you write four stanzas of 10 lines each and each stanza ends with the next consecutive line 
of the given four lines. And there's also a rhyme scheme, which I won't tell you about. So the four lines that I borrowed are from a poet called John Terpstra, who also is a carpenter, who wrote a beautiful um, poem and book called Naked Trees. And he said, Naked trees extend their complicated praise. Branches sway in a sort of unison, not agreed upon, each their own way. Tree Song May I be forgiven, may I forgive myself, this endless search for someone, something to explain. Give me the reason we're here, and what lies after, and if there's a plan, or even better, planner. If I could only know for sure, just once, a deal? I'll stay right here, you whisper in my ear the answer. While all around me, animals carry on regardless. Plants and insects don't bother counting days and naked trees extend their complicated praise. Why them? How can they praise and not await reward? Who do they praise? What? How can they stand here splendid and not ask why or if there's a goal, at least a prize for the very best? Do they dream of after death? or fear old age, or insects, or men with saws? Can it matter that underneath the soil they're all in touch? What one knows, all know instantly in a deciduous, coniferous vocabulary that whispers a grace as all around branches sway in a sort of unison. Perhaps I should sit and watch, listen for a while to the shushing of trees. Peace in one place, a salute to sky and no complaints unless you count the crack of the final fall. And what do they see then? Is there mortal terror or a welcome to the stones they shall now lie upon, the bed? from which to nourish other trees. If we die childless, are we forgotten? Is heaven a tonic not agreed upon? Some say there's nothing to be frightened of. There's God or gods or goddesses or not to take me home or not. I'll find out soon enough that's sure. Perhaps this is my fascination with birds who fly above, rest lightly on each moment, small prayers to the beginning and end of day. And after all, how can it matter that I get the story right or wrong? When it comes to living, life and death, each being sings a sort of roundelay, each their own way. During my time in construction, um, one of my chief mentors, since there were so few women, was Emily Carr, the painter, because she too had been told, women can't do this, women can't be painters, as I was told, women can't be carpenters. So this book, To This Cedar Fountain, is a response to various of her paintings. And this painting is called Swaying. Nothing is still in her forests. Nothing dies, except that it forms the humus for everything else that moves, breathes, sways, trees, rocks, stumps. The wind is elated to have such glorious waving company to honor it. <laughs>